I want to welcome everyone who came here in person tonight and then also everyone that's watching uh, via YouTube Live tonight as well. Um, I'm going to give a brief introduction of the, uh, uh, of the project, including the history, um, because what I don't want tonight to be about, because we've heard plenty of it, is why didn't we do this, why didn't we do that, why didn't we do this. This project's been going on for two decades. And uh, no one on the board was here when this started, including me. Um, we, we inherited it. Uh, same thing with, uh, with Ramsey. He was a young man when this started. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now he has kids of his own. So, uh, and I want to thank the trustees for, for coming tonight, uh, particularly Bill, who, uh, who drove in from Michigan be, uh, you know, and uh, did, delayed his vacation with his in-laws. Uh, and then, uh, and then Mike, who, and then Mike, who is, uh, who uh, had to take his uh, wife for her birthday, had to take her to lunch instead of dinner. So thank you guys so much for giving up those very important events to be here tonight. Um, so, so talking about the triangle, as I said, this went back to like 2000, and it's a TIF district. For those of you who don't know what a TIF district is, it's a tax incentive financing district. And so what what that means is that um, at, the property taxes were set flat when that TIF was enacted for all the taxing bodies. So they get the same amount every year. And then any amount over that tax from the new, any, anything new that's in there, like 9750, goes into the project itself for infrastructure. The reality of the project is, is that it's about $30 million in the hole because we don't have any projects. Typically in a TIF, you'll see a, you'll see a plan put together right away or actually while the TIF is going on so that things get built right away so then if that would have been built by say 2006, 2007, the last 14 years we've been getting taxes to pay off for all that infrastructure. We didn't have that in this case, okay? Um, there wasn't really a plan. We, we've seen, I know a lot of you have seen four plans. There were four plans that I'm aware of in the early 2000s up to about 2008 uh, at the tune of between a half a million and a million dollars um, cost to the village. The, nothing here looks anything like those plans. Because none of this looks anything like those plans, none of the whole project's gonna look like those plans. Those plans were, as many of you recall, single story, two story buildings. Uh, in fact, the 2008 Land Development Code called for single story and two story buildings along 143rd and along LaGrange. Anything larger, these cut size buildings were allowed, but they were to be in the back of the site. Well, obviously, um, two, that was 2008. That was the code when these things were put in. They just changed the code to allow those, so um, things changed. Um, in a perfect world, in my opinion, you would have a developer that wants to come you know, redevelop the whole site, well, even, if the, even if they're only doing pieces of it, but they have a plan for the whole site. We never really had that. So we ended up with uh, 97.50 in an about 2013, 14 time frame. $65 million project, taxpayers put up 64 million of it. When we got out of it, we lost about seven million on the real estate part of it. We are generating property tax, which is good, but on a pure real estate perspective, that's what we lost on it. Um, good news is we're not involved in it anymore. We don't have any ownership, so that's a good thing. Um, uh, University of Chicago being in Orland Park is a great thing um, that they're here. The downside is, is that um, they were looking at two other sites and they are a non-for-profit. And remember what I said, in a tax increment district, we want property tax, it helps pay the infrastructure. Well, University of Chicago doesn't pay any. So putting a non-for-profit in a TIF is not, um, not what, I would, what, I, what I would normally do, but that's what we have. So the point is, is that this is what we have now. What we have is 9750, what we have is a, a parking deck. The parking deck is, is needed, it's going to be used, it's gonna be useful because parking is limited, will be limited down there uh, because it is not a big site. You know, I hear people, oh, we need a downtown like Naperville. Well, Naperville's five, what, five or six square blocks by five or six square blocks. This is a block by a block. Okay, it's just, just not that big of a site. So, but we're gonna need parking for that site because the reality is, as much as people want transit-oriented developments, people are not taking a train as Orland Park destination to get off here that, like they do downtown. So people are gonna get here by car. So we're gonna need parking. So the good news is we have parking there, but we do have big buildings along 143rd, so this is not going to be some quaint little downtown. It's, it's just not, that won't look right or fit right in this, and, it, and quite frankly, I don't think Ramsey and his team could actually make any money building something, you know, a bunch of single-story buildings there at this point. So, what, but what we have to do is we have to take what we have, 
We have to mod modify the plans that we have and, and implement a plan that does look good, um, does blend in with the rest of the site. It's going to be a little bit more urban. Um, there, you're going to see that some of it's been walk that some of the area is walkable. But again, it's a block by a block. It's not a whole lot of space down there. Um, the other thing that uh, that Ramsey, the board has, and I have made very clear to Ramsey and his team is, and we made clear to the last group as well, is that um, whatever's done down here cannot just benefit the people who live here in this picture. It has to benefit all of the <coughs> residents of Orland Park. So we want something that everyone in Orland Park gets to enjoy, not just the people who live at 143rd and LaGrange. How did we get here with Ramsey? Um, so when I was elected, one of the things I wanted to see um, was to see the development as a whole. You, you'll hear a lot about, oh, we had a movie theater online. Well, here's what we had for a movie theater. We had a letter of intent, and they had a promise that they were going to be given $8 million. They just given $8 million for a movie theater. That movie theater had 12 theaters nationwide, and they would not sign a lease. Well, as soon as I walked in and I heard that they were being offered $8 million and they hadn't signed a lease, I said, they're never going to. If they've got that much money on the table, no one gives a movie theater that much money. If they got that much on the table and they're not signing a lease, they never will. Six months later, they, they hadn't. Um, then we know that we approved an AMC deal. AMC obviously just backed out of their deal with COVID. So we may have dodged a bullet because having a, a theater down there with what's happened to the theater industry, it, from all I've heard, people expect it to recover, but it might be four or five years till that happens. So it, it may have been a, a bad thing. So, you know, things work out for a reason. So uh, we ended up with looking to get the whole site redeveloped. We had two developers that we chose to provide more information. One was Edwards Realty, one was Structure Development. The board chose on a, on a not, it was not a unanimous vote, so people did vote for Edwards and people voted for Structured. Structure Development was chosen. Through COVID, they decided to back out. Well, what we did is we re-engaged Edwards to see if they were still interested, and they were. Obviously, the plans have changed slightly because the dynamics of the marketplace have changed. One of the things in the long term that we're probably going to have to do to, to make a project that we all want to see is we're probably going to have to extend that TIF. And we've already had some of those discussions with um, the school boards and the fire district to engage with those discussions because there are some things we have to, some hoops we have to jump through to do that. And the reason why is because this project, by the time it was done, we'd only have a couple, couple of years left in the TIF and we won't see anything back to help pay for that infrastructure. So, by extending that, we will get some money back in to help pay for that infrastructure and help Ramsey and his team develop a project that we all want to see. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ramsey, and then he's going to turn it over to all of you for questions and input and the like. Well, thank you. Um, pleasure to be here discussing a downtown Orland Park project. Uh, I will say I've never taking over a project that's already $30 million in the hole, but you know, there's challenges that uh, we can overcome. Um, like your favorite substitute teacher in grade school, I'm gonna start off with a video. Uh, Taylor? <laughs> so this is kind of a brief overview of the project.
so that is part of our uh, marketing campaign to users for the site. Uh, Edwards Realty Company, we're a small family operation based here in Norland Park. I'm also a resident here. And this project and this site is very, very meaningful to me and uh, my company. Um, we own Orland Park Crossing across the street. We bought that out of foreclosure in uh, three different phases. And you know we're able to turn that around and stabilize it. We also developed um, the building with City Barbecue uh, on the other corner. And so we have an intimate knowledge of, of specifically this area of Orland Park. Uh, I personally drive past this site multiple times a day, whether it's dropping my kids off at school or on the way to the office. And in being in Orland Park and being in the retail tenant uh, business and finding tenants and promoting Orland Park uh, nonstop, it only made sense to want to uh, be part of this site in some way, shape, or form. We always wanted to uh, build on what we're already doing in Orland. And uh, previously, you know, it was, uh, it was very distressing to see, you know, as we're working through Orland Park Crossing and turning that around, we would have multiple tenants kind of, we have a lot of smaller users there, smaller space, we don't have very large space. Uh, you know, when we're out to the market and at these conventions and trade shows and, and other things, talking to potential tenants, um, you know, we always had an interest in maybe moving some of them or putting them in the, in the triangle site. And I would always call and say, you know, what is the availability there? And I would never get a straight answer. You know, so, I mean, the number one thing when you're trying to sell something is, you know, how much and when. And those could never be answered. So we were, you know, very excited when, you know, new administration took over and, you know, went out to RFP, even though we weren't successful the first time around, um, we're usually the, the, the guys that come in second and actually finish the project and get the job done. So we are very excited to be here. I'm very excited to uh, talk about our plans. And I just want to let everyone know this is what we're going to market as. This is conceptual. And, you know, we will be out in the market. We will see what um, what the users you know, out there are interested in um, and what the community is interested in as well. So we're going to merge those things and being an integral part of the community now, I'm also the Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce, so we have you know, almost um, you know, 500 businesses uh, under our umbrella. So you know, we're talking to a lot of existing businesses and we're talking to a lot of new businesses coming into town. So you know, we, with that information, I feel like allows us at Edwards Realty to kind of uh, be at the forefront of of what's going on, and the downtown is an integral part of any any community. So I mean, back when uh, you know learning real estate in college or and architecture and how things are built, it's always built around a city center from the beginning of time. Is there has to be a, a city center, and for a long time when I was growing up, that was Orland Square Mall, and you know that was great for the time that, at that time. But you you know there still are places for. Uh, so indoor malls like Orland Square Mall. There's places for outdoor malls like Orland Park Crossing and Orland Park Place. But we but we don't have what consumers, residents, community members, you know, want and need, and that's a downtown. And I've always been envious as well of other you know downtowns. We've we've done a lot in other downtowns too. Uh, that and that knowledge we're going to bring to Orland Park. Uh, we did a major redevelopment in downtown Lagrange. Um, we had two city blocks that we were able to, that were already built, that had some issues. We came in, uh, vacant borders, other vacancies, we came and fixed those. We uh, are doing work in Burr Ridge. We bought the uh, Burr Ridge Village Center. And we made a number of changes during COVID and now we're created an entertainment district. Uh, we brought in new tenants, medical, businesses, retail. So we see how these things work and how they change communities, but you really need a community to buy into what you're doing. Uh, in order to be successful. So uh, I'd like to run through the project with you and uh, you know, get into a little bit more detail. Um, so development team, uh, Edwards Realty Company, and then we have a minority partner, Core Acquisitions, that is also helping us, that we've partnered on other projects before. Uh, our leasing team, we're using JLL on the retail side and Avis and Young for the office leasing. We have architects at D plus K and contractors at ICI. Um, I'm happy to say that everyone on the team has some connection to Orland Park. They either grew up here, graduated college here, uh, and are intimately familiar with the South Side. It was very important for me to bring in people who understood um, 
understood Orland Park in the community. A lot of times, I mean, when I was trying to sell, let's say, city barbecue, you know, get off 55 and, you know, come down, they're like, you know, this is all forest preserves. There's nobody here. There's, you know, nothing going on until you have to really sit them down, explain everything that's going on, and then they see the kind of the magic here, which a lot of, a lot of businesses do. It was, um, over and over I would hear, uh, you know, we're going to do Naperville, we're going to do this, and then we'll do Orland Park. And then by the time they do get to Orland Park, they always exceed expectations. Their sales always exceed expectations. So we've seen that a number of times, and it's still, a, you know, it's still an uphill battle, but um, we want to build on the successes of the other businesses here. Uh, and you'll hear from some of them later on the team. So welcome to downtown Orland Park. Um, this is going to be a really premier shopping and entertainment destination in the southwest suburbs. Um, I don't need to sell you on all of the amenities of Orland, since most of you are residents here or do business here. But I'm going to con continually say this over and over, that we are a regional hub. So for, so, for a town, uh, a village that attracts from you know, all of the surrounding areas, we're like a nucleus here. So we are definitely poised to be able to have a downtown that not only serves um, the residents in this exact area, the residents of all of Orland Park, but all of the surrounding suburbs. When we uh, bought Orland Park Crossing, the first thing we did is try and figure out what, um, who are our, our customers? How do we market this? And you know, marketing has become a, a very big part of what we do. And we learned that we get a lot of uh, shoppers from Northwest Indiana. Um, you know, obviously Homer Glen, Frankfurt, Mokina, uh, Moni, Manhattan. I mean, our reach is a lot farther than some of the other suburbs, like the western suburbs and northern suburbs that may have um, other shopping destinations that are a lot closer. People will drive from longer distances to come here. So we're looking at putting significant amount of commercial space, 63,000 square feet, a lot of restaurants, a lot of restaurant space here, and I'll get into that later. Um, a significant amount of office space. We need daytime population here, and I think we're poised for a really cool office development. Uh, when we're going through with our office team and our architects talking about the different uh, amenities we're, you know, we want to have, and you know, you know, I'm like, well, what's already here? D is this around? Is this around? It was continually no, 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 and you know, I, I think that these are the things, especially coming out of COVID, that we're going to be presenting um, to potential users of the building that are going to be really exciting. Um, we're going to have residential space as well, some more residential space. Uh, we're going to have what's really cool and we'll hear from later, um, a civic entertainment amphitheater as well, uh, three stories. And then obviously we have to have more parking spaces to accommodate all that. Um, and I don't want to leave out the green space. And we're going to have an amazing park, which we'll get into later, which I think is going to tie the whole development together. Uh, about Orland Park, well, you know all about Orland Park, so I'm not going to have to get into it very much. Um, the location here uh, bodes very well, uh, if you go to the next two, um, bodes very well for coming off of you know, 294, 55, 57, LaGrange Road. Uh, it's really a short commute from uh, Midway Airport and you know, the amazing train station that we have. So the location has never been a problem here. It's never been a problem to sell the location. Um, the connection to the community. Uh, <laughs> the connection to the internet is, uh, <laughs> is the problem here, not the connection to the community. Uh, OK, well, while well, they're working through that, um, we'll talk about you know, we have the train station, which is a great amenity. Um, the, I, what I really like about this location is, and what I've always sold people on of Orland Park Crossing is, Orland Park has, uh, okay, we'll go, uh, go to the next one. Yeah, there we go, okay. So um, the train station is a little bit underutilized. I think a development like this will help utilize that and uh, it's my understanding there's funding uh, now that's come to the table to expand some of the, the train lines and uh, build up ridership. And coming out of COVID, those things will continually build and bodes very well for the property. We have bike paths that, that go through there. Um, you know, we're going to have parking garages. 
uh, existing parking garage that's already there. So, you know, for vehicular traffic, for, you know, this day and age where a lot of people are using ride share and those kind of things, this site will all be suitable for that, uh, as well as the walkability. Um, so we're, we're going to curate the retail and dining. Um, and what that means, and what I'm talking about, the connection to the community, is I know we don't need, you know, very many more chain restaurants. I, I, I live it, you know, I know it. So what we're trying to do is figure out the best fit for this development where there are restaurateurs and businesses that are, you know, not the typical national brands um, that come in here and it's very cookie cutter, but more of the local flavor. I mean, we need some specialty retail and dining. And I'm going to uh, bring up a member of our retail team uh, that's taking, uh, taking the lead on the leasing to talk a little bit about the retail environment, the community, and kind of what we're, what we're trying to go for here. So Peter Caruso, if you wouldn't mind coming up, talking a little bit about the retail market and, and how great you're going to do for this development. Of course. Caruso, I work with Jones Light of Sale. Um, I have been working, oh, oh. just attach that. Is that good? Is that good? Okay. Peter Caruso, uh, Jones Lane LaSalle. I lead up the retail leasing team for the Midwest of uh, JLL. Um, been in the business for 15 years, been working with Ramsey and his family for 10. And uh, over the last few years, we have leased more space than almost anybody else uh, in the market. So when this opportunity came to us, um, we jumped all over it. Orland Park is as it's been stated, does not have a central district uh, per se. And I think that this will be uh, what we have. I was actually one of the first leasing agents on 9750 at the park. Um, I've leased 159th, at least uh, 159th in LaGrange for Simon, uh, 143rd in LaGrange on the property uh, that Ramsey developed as well. Uh, so I've done a fair amount here. Um, I'm not local to Orland. I grew up in Bridgeport. Uh, not that far away, so um, you know I, this means something to me outside of you know just collecting fees. But the state of the market today is um, it's all over the place. So I would say about 60% of my portfolio is urban based, and the city has taken uh, a, a very hard hit. And what we have seen is a lot of people leaving the the city, coming back out to the suburbs and there has been more uh, transactions happening in the suburbs today than I've seen probably in the last uh, five to seven years. So uh, in a very short time frame, we've put this out to the marketplace and we've received multiple offers from all different types of uses. Uh, Ramsey brought up, we just don't wanna do the same cookie cutter, everything that you see everywhere else. Uh, and we're trying to curate something that's more than, than just that. I believe Chuck Lager just signed a deal uh, in the market, right? They're mm -hmm. taking over the old Granite City. Uh, that's uh, Fabio and the guys that are behind Bar Siena uh, in the city are also taking over that. So we have a very, very similar approach, talking to a lot of good local uh, groups, trying to get them over here uh, into the market and, and doing something here. So a very good mix of, of retail, of whatever that is today, uh, restaurant, entertainment, uh, is, is where we're at. And the good thing is about the timing of this project is um, there's, more, uh, there's more emphasis on the suburbs today than there has been. So two or three years ago where everybody was focused on being in the city in some way, shape, or form, that is not happening today. Uh, all the suburban centers that we represent are doing a very, very good job of leasing up both from a rental rate standpoint and from a tenancy standpoint. So that's, that's the more or less the state of the market. Uh, I brought on three people from my team onto this, so this is a number one uh, priority for us to, to get this up and running uh, as soon as we can. Thanks, Pete. Yep. So in addition to have it, having curated retail and dining at the site, we are also going to have a uh, premier office and residential. So, you know, I'm going to um, uh, bring up a member of our office team to talk about. This is a product we're br going to bring to market on the office side that Orland Park has never seen. And uh, it's going to be, 
you know, one of the nicest, uh, nicest position and um, nicest office building, I would say, uh, around. And we have to do it justice as a regional center. We should be a regional center of commerce as well. And in order to do that, you got to have the space to do that. And um, I'm a big believer that we need the, the office space here. So I'll bring up Matt Ward uh, to talk a little bit about the office market. That's right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ramsey. Sure. I am Matt Ward. Uh, I've been uh, in commercial real estate for Avis and Young. I lead a large team uh, downtown in suburban Chicago. I'm an Orland Park resident. I've been a resident here for 20 years, so I'm a, a very uh, intrinsically motivated for this project. I see a lot of value here, and I see a lot of benefits to our community, and I'm incredibly motivated to, to get it done. Um, over that 30-year real estate career, I've done a lot of you know anchor, anchor tenant development in the suburbs, in the city, um, very understanding of what corporate America wants, what they don't want, what the new dynamics are in terms of what they're trying to do to recruit and retain the best talent in the world. So a big part of what, what, what drives Chicago office uh, development and office absorption is really who's going to be taking these desks, who's going to be taking these cubes. And those kids are, for the most part, this is just a generalization, okay, but are kind of big 10 kids, right? So a lot of these are from Notre Dame and Michigan and I hope I don't leave anything out, Illinois and Wisconsin and Illinois State and all those great schools are producing engineering and law and financial and accounting and all of those kids are smart and brilliant and they don't want to work in a big parking field in the suburbs of X, including Orland Park. Right? They, they have coveted and shown their desire around, around the country and around the world to be in urban centers that have mixed use opportunities for them to have a quality of life at the desk, which our architectural team is working very closely in, in with uh, the Edwards team to produce a building that's representative of their desires, and a community that they're going to be excited to go to work every day, right? And so everybody wants them to come to work for them, and you know a lot of those kids are, are uh, highly talented and they're young, and so you know the idea of being able to go for a run at lunch and take a shower, the ability to go out and have some drinks with coworkers after work, or to go to uh, three different places to have coffee for a break. Uh, all of those things are incredibly important for their decision to come to work for XYZ company. And so, as, as Peter mentioned, there's, there's certainly some dynamic to it in the office market. There is a little bit of uncertainty as to relates to large corporations' desire to continue their, their, their kind of migration to the city. And I, I think they're kind of stepping back and thinking about that. And I think there is a more desire than most, there has been for a long time, to, to evaluate suburban locations. Uh, what they are not considering are parking field scenarios, right? So we have this, you know, big parking field in Piatone. Piatone is a great community, but the big parking field, we're going to build the most inexpensive real estate possible. We're going to put it on a single floor, and everybody's going to get these huge cubes, and we're going to put a, you know, a thousand uh, square foot deli in there and a small little fitness center, and we want you to come to work here. And it's going to be really hard for those companies to recruit those kids, and they know it, and so they're, no matter what the price of, of of real estate is there, they're not coming to that space because it's not going to drive their productivity and their business line. And so what's really great about this project, what's really exciting about creating a, a really truly mixed use project where we're integrating daytime population, nighttime population, retail, residential, a community center, uh, you know, a nature preserve, an opportunity, and, and the community that we live in, a safe community uh, that has tremendous access to labor and, and, and strong demographics. And we're going to go and manufacture a story. We're not looking to, in the old terms, they use the word cannibalize. We're, we're not going to call the tenant from across the street like they do in downtown Chicago and say, you can come over here for a dollar less, and, and would you come and do it? We're going to go out and tell a story of what 20,000 square foot floor plants and full height glass and a truly mixed use development can do with a qualified developer in a great community. And we want your employees from X, large, you know, publicly traded, Fortune 100 company ideally, or but notwithstanding that, a great quality tenant to anchor this project. And then the balance of the project, as is often done, we've done many times, will be filled in with medium-sized tenants, smaller local tenants, but will produce an asset that is financeable for, for the Edwards team, that has tremendous merit for the development, that's cohesive and symbiotic to what we're trying to achieve. And that's that's what's getting us excited. And, and, and the Edwards team has really produced something that's excited, and Rem's going to talk more about that. Um, I'm going to try to get our company to take some office space in this building because I think it's going to be great. Uh, but, but I think there's really a, a tremendous opportunity for the business team, for the community, for everybody to benefit. Uh, and, and I'm saying that you know, as a resident of the community and as a very qualified uh, developer professional in the business. So we're excited to be on the team uh, and we're thrilled to be part of it. Thanks, so, man. Thank you.
You guys heard it here. His company's going to take some office space in the development. That's all I heard from all of that. We got a tenant. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, we are going to, there's residential on the site at 9750, and we want to expand upon that in some way, shape, or form. But our main focus is on the, the commercial aspect, the, the restaurants, the retail, and the office. And we know, you know, residential is very hot right now. Uh, we know what kind of product we want to put at the site. We're just not, um, we're not going to commit to exactly where yet until some of all these other things shake out. So let's move on to the current downtown Orland Park. Um, you know, we have, a, we have University of Chicago, we have a CVS at the ground floor, we have a parking deck with a, um, with a vacant commercial space at the base, and we have 9750 um, residential building. Now, all these are separately owned. We don't control it. We don't have anything to do with it except to work with our uh, existing neighbors to bring something great to fruition. Uh, we also have Crescent Park uh, that's there now, which we are planning some changes. Um, so some of the changes will be a new park, and this will, and this is a rendering of, you know, what what that will look like on a periphery of a walking path. Um, we have a, a three-story civic building, which you can see there, uh, amphitheater, which we'll get into later, and uh, we are proposing a Heroes Memorial Park uh, to be the centerpiece of the development. Um, we need to create a sense of you know what a downtown is and it's not just putting up a bunch of buildings and having like a mini skyline um, we got to have a place that people want to go for many different reasons so you know we're, we need to brand it we need to market it and it needs to be a place um, that people come from all over you know to downtown Orland Park and the funny thing is I'm, I'm sure a lot of you who frequent other towns when you have to uh, you go you know there's a business that moves in you know to another municipality uh, in their downtown, and that drives a lot of traffic. You, whether it's a brewery or a restaurant or a store, you know that kind of starts to change things. So, it, and it, you don't need to have an anchor these days. They don't need to be, you know, 100,000 square feet, and it's a, a Target or a Walmart, and you get some small shop space next to it. It can be a really cool restaurant that is very hard to get, that nobody else around can get, and they can't figure out why, but we got them. So that's what we're trying to do, and that's what we're going to do. So this is an example of we want to create kind of an entertainment district at the north end of the site, where and the south end will open up to a new park, and at the north end will be um, a water feature, and we have. Uh, what Matt was talking about earlier, an office, uh, office building is what you see on that side, and that's a proposed residential building on that side. Now, that's all on top of um, commercial space, and we envision that not to be um, necessarily like shopping and retail, but more entertainment and pedestrian only. So we're going to cut off the street. Uh, there'll be drop-off points. There'll be another parking garage we'll get into later. But that's going to be a place that has you know, bars, restaurants, um, as you can see here is an overview and in order to activate you know really all around you, you, we want to have a rooftop area a rooftop restaurant on top of the office building and also for the office tenants they're going to be able to have uh, another area of, of rooftop space for um, you know relaxation office meetings outdoor conference areas uh, whatever and you know, this is kind of going to be like a like a Bourbon Street or a Beale Street, where it's it's going to be active, and there's going to be multiple different things to go to, uh, whether it's a uh, you know kind of like a country western bar, and it, you know a, a, a kind of cool Mexican restaurant, and you know it's going to be very lively with music and activations, and a lot of things that people want these days and flock to, and we need to have it here, and which is what we're going to do, and we've already had some uh, great. Um, great momentum uh, that JLL has brought with uh, several tenants that, that want to be here. So, you know, honestly, name like your favorite, you know, restaurant in a different community um, that, that's popular that people go to and we're talking to them and they're interested. So it's really the hardest part is figuring out, you know, which one we go with and what's going to be the best mix for these puzzle pieces. Um, let's go to the next rendering. All right, so here we have, this is basically the master plan. And I'll get into the specific, uh, the specific parcels, but you know, as so parcel, uh, parcel A is uh, parcel A and B are going to straddle the the entertainment district that we have here, 
and parcel A is going to be the primarily the office component, and then parcel B is going to be the residential component that we're proposing now. Now, where you see Crescent Park, um, now we're planning on putting a building there, and this is going to be kind of uh, what I would call like a, a focal point of the development, because it's going to be an, an amphitheater, uh, a civic building used for uh, a multitude of uses, but um, we have the, the user here, so we did sign a letter of intent with a company to uh, come in and, and we're going to build a building for them. And uh, they're going to speak later as to all of the uses that are going to go on at this building, but it is, uh, it's very forward thinking, it's very 21st century, there's nothing like it. But the key to all of these things is to make it uh, timeless. You know, whatever we build here has to be around for 100 years, and that doesn't mean that you know, if a use changes, we tear the building down and build something new. It just means that it has to be adaptable and multi-purpose and multi-use. Because as we know, things change all the time. And we want to make sure we're not um, reinvesting millions of dollars into infrastructure when we could kind of think about these things ahead of time and do it in a thoughtful way. Um, we also have uh, some outlot buildings on LaGrange Road, uh, which will most likely be restaurants and retail. Um, the, what I spoke of before, the centerpiece, is um, Heroes Park. We're going to have a Heroes Memorial in there. And it's going to be a very large park where it's going to do everything that Crescent Park does now, uh, except 10 times more. We'll be able to have water features there. We'll still have small concerts, you know, whether it's market at the park, different activations, uh, food trucks, all those kind of things that, uh, that the community has, has come out for currently. And we're going to build upon that. We've seen it. I've been there. We've had booths there uh, you know, for our center at Orland Park Crossing. So um, you know, we live these things. We see it. And then we see how we can maybe improve upon it. Um, oh, so then we do have parcel C. Um, we're talking with a, either a senior housing developer or a daycare user um, that will most likely be you know, some type of commercial or uh, potential uh, residential development there. Um, we can get into the specific parcels now, and I'll you know, share some data um, going more into parcel A and B. So on parcel A, we're talking about a six-story mixed-use building. Uh, the first floor is going to be commercial, as I stated before, uh, primarily uh, bars, restaurants, entertainment uses. Um, we are going to have the second through fifth floor of the office use, state-of-the-art office building. And we do want to create a uh, rooftop amenity uh, for the office, and we're going to have a rooftop restaurant. We're talking with a specialty uh, wine bar right now. And uh, in order to do that, we do have to, uh, on the parking lot that you see there, is going to be an additional uh, parking deck for three, uh, over 300 cars. Now, parcel B, again, we're going to do a five-story mixed-use building. The first floor is going to be commercial, part of that entertainment district that I'm uh, that I spoke of before. The second and fifth floor, we're proposing uh, luxury residential units, um, about 80 units, and then we do have an out parcel on LaGrange Road. Um, that will be surface parking, and we're talking about uh, potential underground parking uh, below for the, to handle the residential, uh, residential parking. So if we move on to uh, Crescent Park, this was the three-story uh, civic amphitheater we talked about and we're going to have uh, uh, the user come up uh, in a little bit and discuss that concept in detail because that was new to me and uh, and you know as soon as I heard about you know the potential for you know they're very forward thinking in eSports and you know other concerts and uh, and uses uh, it, it was very very cool and I think we'll tie into the our development very very nicely but we'll get into that a little bit later uh, parcel H, this is the parking lot kind of in front of um, University of Chicago on LaGrange Road. These will be outlot buildings as well, uh, retail or uh, restaurant, fast casual, potential for a drive through for the right user. Uh, parcel C, which I just mentioned, we have a couple different options. There's a senior housing developer we're talking about doing a joint venture with. Um, and then we also have a uh, daycare center, several daycare users that uh, would like to be here. And we think you know, both uses are very, um, very symbiotic of what we're trying to do here. And uh, especially with people going to work, using the train, those kind of things, I think, uh, I think a daycare center or senior housing 
uh, would be great and add, add a little bit of density and need at the site. Um, next, you have the, uh, uh, the new park, uh, which, we're, which we're designing now. We're going to be working on this in conjunction with the village. Um, there, you know, we're, we're going to have uh, ability to, to have cafes, uh, different water features we're talking about now, and we really do want the centerpiece to be a hero's memorial park. I believe that was brought up at a board meeting of possibly putting one by the police station. Um, I thought the idea was very good. I didn't think the location that was proposed was very good. It needs to be somewhere that people are going to see and want to go to. Uh, nobody wants to go to a police station, no offense. Uh, <laughs> but, um, and really coming out of COVID and all, and all of the other things that um, you know, we've seen, there are a lot of heroes around and uh, I'm sure you know a lot of them are in your family and they should be celebrated. Um, in all of these spaces, you know, like I said before, we have the community in mind. There are going to be a lot of community features, um, whether it's water features, ability to, um, you know, relax, play ping pong, bags, different, uh, different activations and programs we have going on. So, you know, it, any part of a successful downtown, you have things going on and it's cohesive. So we've learned that in our shopping centers that are primarily lifestyle centers or in downtowns of suburbs, um, everyone does well when they work together to do something. So it doesn't do any good if you have an amazing tenant, you know, next to one that's struggling, you know, next to one that's, you know, doesn't feel like turning on their sign or cleaning their windows, you know, those things shine through. So we're not interested in having just the, uh, you know, the sexiest tenant or, you know, with the best balance sheet. They have to really do something for us. And we're being very, very picky in that regard. And, you know, some of our bankers don't like to hear it, but, you know, we, we're not going to go with, you know, all national tenants. We're just not. I'm not interested in it. So we're, we want to have the local flavor. There will be local and regional tenants here. Of course, there'll be some national ones, but this isn't just going to be something that you're able to see in, you know, a, a community in South Carolina and then a community in Texas and, you know, repeat. That's not what we're interested in. That's not the type of developers that we are. Um, so, you know, uh, I think a centerpiece of what we're doing here is this amphitheater civic building. So I'd like to bring up uh, Ken McGraw to talk a little bit about um, what he's bringing to Orland Park. Ken? Uh, where did it go? There you go. Okay. Thanks for leaving the PowerPoint for me. That's awesome. Okay. Yes, my name is Ken McGraw. I represent uh, GTV. We're an eSports media company. And yeah, let's see the first slide. Uh, if that's the end result of the building that we occupy, that would be fantastic. Right now we're in the process of figuring out what that's exactly going to be. We recognize that this triangle is unique with the existing structures that are already there. So we're working with uh, designers and planners right now to figure out the best way that this thing would uh, look based on our usages and things that we're going to uh, be doing inside of this building. So usages, um, we are an eSports media company. Anybody f here familiar with eSports and what that is? Okay, so we've got kids in the family, gamers in the family. <laughs> Wonderful. What we intend to happen here is to be the energy and the excitement and the engine that drives a lot of eyeballs, a lot of attention, and foot traffic and dollars to this particular triangle. And if you're familiar with the esports industry at all, um, you understand that uh, those things are accomplished based on the activities that happen inside of any particular building. So starting with the building itself, again, we intend it uh, to be something that fits naturally inside of the space. We're working with Ramsey. Ramsey, thank you for bringing us in on this project. I appreciate it. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Uh, so we're excited about being here. I'm personally excited about being here because I am a lifer in Orland Park, actually a third generation Orland Park resident. Okay, I think my grandma told me that she was here when LaGrange Road was gravel. So, okay, and I have renewed my, <laughs> it's true. I don't know if they have pictures or not of that, but, and I've renewed my driver's license over there more times than I care to admit, okay? So I am a local person. And he does his meetings at Fox's. So. And I do, yes. <laughs> my dad's favorite pizza joint, okay? 
So um, I'm vested in this project uh, more so than just being uh, an occupier or a tenant or an owner of this building specifically. Uh, this is a major feather in my cap and my company's cap to be a part of this facility, to be part of this project and development. And uh, I thank Ramsey for bringing us in on that. So um, the brief time I have here, I'm just going to give you a couple bullet points of what's going to happen in this building. I'll be at a table here afterward for more questions uh, about that. But eSports right now, I know I lose a lot of people. Uh, but again, the building itself will have the activations of eSports and tournaments, live events, and also a civic center. So this is a multi-purpose building, not a, uh, a one-dimensional uh, situation. This is a multi-purpose building. But uh, the activations and the events that we bring to this space bring in a tremendous amount of activity, eyeballs, and revenue from outside of uh, the city itself. So just some cursory review of eSports events that happen. Um, you know, 80, 85 cents on every dollar that's generated with an eSports event comes in from outside of the city uh, itself. So it's a major revenue producer, great for the, uh, the, the retail in and around here. So I'm excited to work with Ramsey and the Chamber and get all the businesses involved with this particular project. So this is very much a group effort for what's about to happen here. Uh, we intend to bring uh, the engine, the excitement, the activity, but we really intend to work with the chamber and the existing businesses here to bring them inside of this building to ha have access to all of this new uh, activity that's about to happen inside of this building itself. So uh, the eSports competition stage, yes, there will be uh, three floors on this space, obviously a 96,000 square foot building. Uh, one of the floors is dedicated to a competition stage, which is actually also uh, a live event space. Okay, so people come in and we host uh, live events, uh, whether it's eSports tournaments or concert events, things of that nature uh, will be hosted in this space. So the uh, TV production studios that will be here um, give me the reason to call this an eSports technology and media space. So this destination will be known as a high-tech uh, media production facility and live event space. So people will see Orland Park as a destination uh, to come and participate in the live events that are here, but also to be tenants inside this building because of the technology that will be available inside of this space. So this is not uh, a convention center with four walls and some chairs. This will have that component to it that will invite the public in to utilize the space, invite the businesses in to utilize the space, but also uh, attract the high technology consumer and partner and uh, business to be a part of the space because of uh, the technology that will be associated inside of, of this building itself. So here's kind of a rendering of, uh, actually a picture of uh, what an eSports event looks like, which is just basically a stage and a bunch of people that are coming to watch other people play video games. So it's, uh, <laughs> whether you get it or not, they come here and this is actually a high dollar event, okay? So the demographics and the revenue that comes from an event like this uh, far exceeds uh, most other events, okay? The disposable income, again, the demographics and the price per ticket and price per customer, uh, revenue spend per customer that comes to an event like this uh, is exponentially greater than a typical uh, just come out to a concert or come out to an event. So I challenge you to go and, and, and search online for eSports events and the revenue that's produced, the clientele that comes to these spaces uh, is also important to what we're doing here. Um, working with Ramsey to help explain, again, the clientele and the activity that happens inside of a building like this with the events that we put out there and the people that we attract to this. Um, it's attractive to the average Orland Park resident. Again, it's, it's not um, uh, some of these different connotations that may come up when you talk about live events and things of that nature. So eSports itself, is a value add to a community with the events that are produced uh, inside of it. And again, just the foot traffic and the uh, involvement by the local community and the local businesses 
that's why we want to be engaged with uh, the chamber to ensure that everybody has a piece of this pie and is, is part of uh, everything that happens here. So um, this is a rendering of the first floor of the property. Again, we want to be very cognizant of uh, the space itself and the current site plane of this triangle. We understand there's a residential component. There is a, a picture perfect train station, okay, that's right there for a storybook, it's perfect. Uh, but then the area, the, the green space, the, uh, what's it called for the memorial? Oh, Park. Heroes Memorial Heroes Park. Heroes Memorial Park. Uh, and then the new mixed use. We intend to see a lot of traffic circulate inside of this park. Okay, we want to have people that, are, that, that come here for uh, a particular reason and have reasons to stay um, inside of this location. So this here is an instance of things that will happen inside the building that will be open to the public. So open to the public gaming stations, open to the public computers. Uh, we intend to have uh, kiosks and things for local businesses to uh, have access to the foot traffic and things of that nature. People getting off the train, killing time, getting a cup of coffee, uh, visiting some of the things that are here. This is very much a civic center open to the public first floor where people can walk in and out and see what's happening inside of this location, uh, make future plans to come back, uh, and also spend a couple dollars here, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that's uh, very attractive for everybody. So um, the high technology component of this, um, we are a media company, so we are in the business of creating content and also uh, aggregating other content creators, so we attract businesses um, and people that live in this space, that have businesses that uh, deal in content. So communications and media, uh, things of that nature will be a, an integral part of what we're doing here. On the second floor of this building, there'll be a TV production studio, which creates content, which does interviews, that um, generates a lot of activity uh, on the media side of things that, that we'll be occupying and we'll also be offering space, um, office space to people to, to, to rent booths and things of that nature inside of this space. But the first floor is the main event space. We're intending the second floor to be a TV production <coughs> studio, uh, which will also bring to market, again, all of the existing businesses and the existing activity here. We intend to highlight this building and where it's situated and everything that's around it because we want this to be a destination. We want this to be highlighted uh, inside eSports circles, which is international, and also business circles, which may be regional. So if we're reaching uh, local or the tri-state area uh, or whatever it is, we want people to associate Orland Park with a high technology center, with a media center, and with that eSports component uh, that really changes the conversation. We talk about use of space and uh, activity <coughs> inside the building. Go back one. Okay. Uh, one more. Oh. Go forward. Okay, here. Um, so again, back to the first floor. So as people are walking in to the first floor, okay, we want to have uh, things that are available to them. So with the main stage area and the performance space, there may be a live concert event happening. Uh, just like when you go through Disney and you come out, you always exit through the merchandise store, right? <laughs> I mean, okay, I've been to Disney enough to know how it works, right? So um, there has to be a merchandise store. So uh, same thing with the food court and cafeteria area, right? This will be uh, local businesses here. We're, engaging with right now local businesses to be a part of what's happening here, uh, to have a presence here, to have an outreach, and to benefit from what's happening inside of this space. I'll speed it up a little bit here. Is that it? Okay. Um, so again, I'll be over here uh, on the side to answer any more questions specifically about the space, but um, I thank Ramsey for inviting us into the project, and we look forward to uh, uh, being here and developing this. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Uh, I had no idea what eSports was um, when we first started talking. Uh, and we've been talking for 
uh, a couple of years now in, uh, in different facets. I've kind of been learning about the space and it's the fastest growing sport in the US. So, you know, we have to take notice and, and uh, you know, we have to react. Um, so I was told to keep this, you know, short and sweet. Um, I'll just leave with, you know, the connection to the community and what we're already doing is paramount. So, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, we'll have, uh, you know, for example, Orland Park Crossing. We want to be connected to the mall, to Village Hall. So, you know, we want to have things like a trolley system where somebody can park in one place and visit these different assets that we have, you know, going on at certain times. So, you know, there'll be pilot programs going for that. And you know all, all kind of different things that um, that it's not the typical you know just you know park in front of the store, get in and get out. Uh, this will be a place for not only shopping but entertainment, uh, office, um, you know restaurant, retail, and residential. So I think things like this really bring communities together, and I feel it's going to be a very integral part of what Orland Park is, and you know where we're going to go in in the future. Um, so this is meant to be, um, you know, connecting with the community and getting some input. So I'll invite um, our chief of staff and marketing director, Taylor, to come up and let you know how you guys are going to participate and give us your feedback. Oh, well, guys, I think it's pretty self-explanatory here, but um, if you can either scan the QR code with your phone, if it reaches that far, I'm hoping from your seat you can, or you can just text hello to the number that's listed here. Um, what will happen is, is you'll get an automated message that will come to you. It will say, thank you for joining our text community. And then it'll have a link. You'll need to click on that link. It'll add downtown Orland as a contact in your phone. And then once that happens, it will send you a link to a survey that then you can take and let us know your feedback on some of the project. We have some questions there. We did leave a blank box at the bottom. If you do have other questions or concerns, you can leave those in that blank box for us and we can get back to you on those questions. However, um, just so you guys do know, this is an open um, text line. So by any means, you can text us at any time and um, we will get that live. So this can be an open forum for us to be able to connect with the community. If you have questions, concerns, um, it is just like, probably it'd be basically just be texting us, me, Ramsey, the team. So. Um, we will get that and get back to you um, with an answer, you know, when we, when we can, if you do have questions. But if you don't um, or can't figure this out, please just raise your hand and uh, myself and Michelle will come around and help you with that. Um, if not, we'll just take a little bit, let you guys, you know, do that survey for about five minutes. And then once we are done with that, we will do some breakout sessions. We have four um, different stations here in the center. So in these two far corners, we are going to have our architects over here to the left. Us, um, Edwards Realty Company, will be in the corner to the right. The village will be over here with any questions you may have for them. Um, we've kind of highlighted the park for them because they will be helping us with that park. They're um, going to be a partner with us on that, so if you have questions regarding that, they'll be here to answer those. And then um, the eSports, um, Ken will be in the back corner to answer any questions you guys may have about the eSports and Civic Center Arena. So. With that being said, I'll give the mic back to, Ram or to Ramsey so he can conclude this. And we'll be on our way. Thank you all for being here. Long live Oakland Park. <laughs> That's all I got.